So, check out this guitar. If you're like me, oftentimes your guitar winds up leaning against a coffee table or a keyboard or against your computer desk at home. Well, I decided to make a little product that would go between the neck of the guitar and the edge of the desk, and I call it a guitar rest. This is how it turned out. So you can see it has a little saddle area in the front where the neck of the guitar can go. In the back, there's a little well where you can put your capo or your guitar pick or your tuner, whatever. So the neck of the guitar just rests right in that front area. This is called a guitar rest. And I'll give it a little shake here. It's made of a grippy type of plastic that kind of snugs up to the neck of the guitar and to the tabletop. In the rest of the video, I'll show you how I went from the initial idea for this product through the prototype phase and then on to a manufacturer who eventually made this final product that you see here, the guitar rest. So the next step in the process of um, creating this product was coming to my shop. This is my shop. Um, and make a little prototype. All I did was cut out a rough piece of birch plywood in a shape I liked and a wooden dowel. That striped area there I hogged out on a table saw and mated the two together. Let it dry up and then shaped it with a rasp and a shaping sander and came up with this wooden prototype to just kind of test to see if the darn thing worked. So it sits on the counter like that and the guitar would lean into it just like that. So that's pretty close for a prototype. At least tell me logistically how this thing would work. Next step is going to see my injection molder and come up with a final design. So, the next step in the process was to bring this little prototype that I made in my shop over to see my friend Mike, who's a mold designer, mold maker, to make a prototype mold to get a really good part of this invention. So as Mike looks at this prototype that I made, he can see the design changes and modifications that need to be made to make an efficient part. The two main considerations are having the product be able to separate into uh, two halves. Not the product, but the mold. The mold needs to separate in two halves so the product comes out of the mold when it's finished easily. The second main consideration is the thickness of the part. It needs to be uniform throughout the entire part to make it dry correctly and to mold efficiently. So, and to cut the cycle time down, right. So after several mold modifications and discussions, this is what we came up with. This is a computer-aided design um, representation of the part we want to create. This drawing shows the thickness of the part and it being created in a way that the mold can separate into two parts. Then the same program can give a solid representation of the product um, just like this. This is what the part will look like when it comes out of the mold. And these cool computer-aided design programs, also known as CAD, allows you to spin the product around to get a real good picture of what you're creating. There you go. <laughs>
Then you uh, send this concept and design specifications into another program, Computer Aided Machining, or CAM, to create the information that can go directly to a, a computer aided machining tool to make the mold for this part. It's going to kind of highlight here is to set up a block of aluminum in this CNC machine that um, Mike owns and it eventually creates a cavity in the piece of aluminum that looks like my part. That's one half of the mold. This is the other half of the mold. So now we'll put that mold together and show you how we made a prototype. So the next step in the process was to put the two halves of the mold together. Actually we had a big C-clamp holding these together. And then we created this prototype mold to use a syringe to fill that cavity with some catalyzed silicone. So all we did was fill this syringe with silicone and injecting it from the bottom until it came out this top hole. And then we plugged that. And then when it came out this final vent hole, we knew the whole cavity was full. So then we removed the syringe, plugged it, and let it sit overnight to set. The next day, we opened up the mold, Voila, <laughs> is that the word? <laughs> Here's the part. As you can see, it looks essentially exactly like that red model that was on the computer screen. A clever little touch we did was to have some tape cut in reverse of the name guitar rest and we just tape that in there and then it actually showed up let's see if I can get the light just right right in the part so we got a pretty pretty good looking little prototype here that can sit right on the edge of the counter Mike went to get the guitar Oh no, he went to the other part. So, we went from this crude wooden prototype that I made to a final silicone rubbery prototype to show to a prospective manufacturer marketing company. And that will be the next step, taking this product to the manufacturer. So, as we've seen, I took my idea for the guitar rest from a wooden prototype stage. And thanks to my friend Mike, the mold maker and designer, we created this prototype out of catalyzed silicone. Next, I also applied for a patent along the way, and the patent was later issued. And in the meantime, I also talked to my friend Jim, who not only is a fabulous guitar player, but he and his sister own a music store. And I asked him which company I should present this to as far as marketing this product. And he suggested Planet Waves, a division of Diadario. They are the largest music accessory manufacturer and marketer in the world. They were more than happy to take a look at my idea, and I think it was about a year later, um, they recreated the product in this form, 
and in January of 2011 they introduced the guitar rest under their label at the NAM show which is the National Association of Music Merchants I think that's what it stands for um, the NAM show in Los Angeles or Anaheim California in 2011 and the guitar rest is now available at Guitar Center and other music stores throughout the world or you can order it online at several places so that's a quick little nutshell story of the guitar rest Hope you buy one. They're great. <laughs> okay.